So welcome to the Isle of Wight County Press, Cameron Palin. Uh, you're standing for the Green Party for yeah. Isle of Wight West. So we're going to kick off with some questions from members of the public, from Isle of Wight County Press readers. And the first one is this, and you'll have 45 seconds to answer. Now, Islanders say overpriced and unreliable ferries have plagued the Isle of Wight for years. Nick asked exactly what you will do to improve cross travel. So yesterday evening we met with the Whiteland Users Group at their hustings and that was a, the main message there is that our ferries are too expensive and they're unreliable. As a Green and as the party we are saying these ferries need to be nationalised because privatisation has not worked. We do need stronger regulations initially but the end goal needs to be nationalisation so they are truly accountable to Islanders, your readers and the country more generally. Health Watch Isle of Wight says the dental crisis uh, on the island is causing distress to many. There are no signs of it improving. Mike Downs wants to know what you would do about that. So the dental issue has been exacerbated on the island. It's a nationwide issue, but of course on the island it's particularly bad. We need mass investment into our health service. The Greens announced their manifesto. It's fully funded in there to make sure everybody's able to have a GP, um, sorry, an NHS dentist available to them, particularly our young children. We need to work preventative on preventative, preventative measures rather than constantly being on the back foot here. We need mass investment in our NHS and the dental sector within that and making sure that everybody has access to them. So investment is the answer. Storm overflows, the next big issue, containing raw sewage. Uh, they've been released thousands of times uh, on the island over the last few years, including for over 5,000 hours at Cows. Michael Dowse wants to know how you will hold Southern Water to account and stop sewage pollution in our rivers, estuaries and seafronts. Absolutely. I know Michael very well. He's one of my residents in East Cows um, and I've worked with him closely. So I've also worked with Surface Against Sewage and the issue here is privatisation again has been a failure of our water companies. They are not accountable. I, I know the work they've done. They've tried to improve that. But it's not good enough. Um, as a party, again, we fully costed this. The water companies need to be brought into public ownership like they used to be. Privatisation hasn't worked because we've got raw sewage going into our seas. We are a tourist destination and we are quite literally putting crap in our waters, which is, of course, not the message we want to be giving off. So nationalisation of our water companies and making them held accountable. Of course, if you do that, that's going to come at a cost to the country. Yep. We're, to we're told that the infrastructure is in diabolical dr uh, straits, yep. and that's going to use a lot of money, you know, which at the moment is on the onus of the private companies. Yep. So where does the money come from to, to suddenly fill that drop in the ocean? So, so, of course, with the shareholders, for example, with the water companies, £57 billion pound over the last 30 years has been given to them rather than being invested in infrastructure. So that's been a failure of privatisation. Our manifesto is fully costed. We're looking at increasing tax on those those with the broader shoulders, those able to take a bit more of that strain because everybody uses these services. Everybody wants clean water, so those with the broader shoulders should pay slightly more. OK, next question. What would you do to improve education outcomes and support schools on the island to achieve their goals? I work in the education system. I've seen what 14 years of austerity has done. We've got teachers leaving in droves. We've got kids being pushed under massive exam pressures and the system just isn't working. We've seen how academies have taken over schools and there's a lack of accountability to local people and how they are run. We believe the academisation needs to stop of schools. They need to go back under local authority control so they are held accountable. But we need to improve standards, not just, you know, for pupils in the exam sense, but actually our children need to have proper life skills an understanding of the world and our current curriculum doesn't allow that. Uh, energy bills, about £400 higher than they were three years ago. That's despite the price cap fall in July. What would you do to support islanders through the cost of living crisis? So it's, a, it's a massive issue, you know, on the island, across the country. Um, you know, the big five energy companies have not supported people the way they should have done. That doesn't help with the war in Ukraine and the issues we're having with Russia. We've been far too reliant on fossil fuels. We need to invest in renewables, which will bring people's down, people's bills down in the long term. We need home insulation programme, which would be funded by government, but money given to local councils. So people keep pounds in their pockets from their bills and heat in their homes. Um, but of course, on the big five, again, our manifesto is very bold, it is fully funded, and we are saying we need investment, 
in investment in this sector by bringing the big five again into public ownership. We are the only party to be spending a large amount of this election, but that is costed and we know how we would get there. Uh, St Mary's Hospital struggles with the availability of beds. Uh, of course, there are the extra pressures in the holiday months. There's the mainland factor. How are you going to support and improve NHS hospital care? So on an island, we have that issue. We're sending people over to the mainland. We mentioned the ferries a moment ago. We're sending people over for treatments because they're specialists, which is understandable. We've also got an issue of staff at St Mary's. We are heavily reliant on staff from abroad, which is really, really important to us. We absolutely acknowledge that we cherish the fact that people from across the world are coming you know, to our country and to the island to work for NHS. But again, investment is the way forwards. Um, we've seen you know, areas pop up with the mental health hub here in Newport. But you know, Greens in local areas see the local issues too. We're working with GPs um, so people can be seen by their GPs rather than having to go straight to A&E. Um, in our manifesto, our aim is those that need to see a GP will be able to see that one in the same day if it's an urgent treatment and urgent action. I'm going to ask you about GPs, okay. but I'll just pick you up on one thing first. The Conservatives will say they've put a lot of that groundwork in on the NHS. They've done a lot of that work. They've funded some of those things that you were talking about. Yeah. So, I mean, what are you going to do above and beyond that? Well, okay, it's, it's investment in our sector. Um, we've got the beds crisis up there. so. Conservative promised us 40 new hospitals. That has not happened. The Greens would invest £20 billion over the term of the Parliament to invest in new hospitals and repair so actually people can, you know, expanding areas and hospitals on the island, making sure that we've got increased bed capacity. But again, it's preventative measures. Why aren't we taking steps before people have to go to hospital? Why are we seeing people with cancer diagnoses being treated so late? We need to invest in the sector to ensure that we've got less people needing to urgently go into hospital and actually we can prevent that much earlier. So you talked a little bit about GPs and we know that GP surgeries on the Isle of Wight are closing. How are you going to support making more appointments available? So through the appointments it's a case of again trying to get people into GPs earlier, trying to make sure we can get people in there but we need to make sure we've got more GPs on the island rather than closing you know smaller hospitals um, GPs, sorry, like they've done in Wootton, they've reallocated that to Newport now. We need GPs in their local area, GP surgeries, and you know, we're in a case now where people aren't able to see them. We've been working closely in East Scouts with our local medical centre, making sure there are systems in place. We know that we've got paramedics now working in our GPs because there aren't enough of them. They aren't, there aren't enough of them because they've not been treated correctly over 14 years because of austerity, the way the Conservatives have treated the public sector. And we are in a state where every public surface is crumbling and we can't continue that route. And crime. So we know that ASBEs, stop and search, dispersal orders, bobbies on the beat, crime levels, they're all key policing concerns yeah. on the Isle of Wight. So working alongside the PCC, who incidentally will be an opposition party, how would you set and achieve goals in those areas? So despite the fact that, you know, Donna Jones is our policing and crime commissioner is a conservative, on crime and every issue we need to be working across party people shouldn't be going out in the streets and feeling unsafe so whether that is through opening up you know um, police stations across the island that are actually open not just a couple of hours here and there that conservatives are currently done police numbers need to go up um, but we've got people on the streets that are waiting court dates the reason we have got that crisis is because you know barristers went on strike those working in courts went on strike they overpay the public sector has been ruined. All of these issues are due to underinvestment. And that is the message as a party. We need to invest in these sectors to get everything back up where it should be. But also having safe places for people is key. Um, you know, East Cow's the curve's one of our safe places locally. And it's about having places people can go that they feel safe if there isn't a police station near them. There isn't a money tree. Where Where's the money coming from so, for these bands? So again, so we're looking at those with the broader shoulders should pay more. Those personal individuals having um, £10 million of assets should pay 1% more on that. Those with over a billion pounds worth of assets, 2% more tax on that. Um, we are looking at a levy on um, you know, flying and tax, all the carbon around that. So again, it is the, those that are the wealthiest, those in industry that are paying more to government through taxation. And all of these plans I've mentioned today are in a manifesto we launched on Tuesday and sorry Wednesday and it's all fully costed it's been set out by our party 
with Molly Scott Cato, who is an economics professor, and she knows exactly how we can get there, and it is through taxing the wealthiest, tax on carbon, I'll stop and things you like there. that. Okay, so let's move on to the quick fire questions yep. then. Yes or no, will you nationalise trains? Yes. Would you push to rejoin the EU? Yes. Island or party first? Island. National service, yes or no? No. Uh, energy, nuclear or alternative? Alternative. Should 16 year olds be allowed to vote? Absolutely. Your party is itself targeting four key seats. One of those is in Brighton, one of those is in Bristol, uh, one of those is in North Herefordshire and the other one's in the Waveney Valley. Yeah. The Isle of Wight's not included there, so does your party think you can win? So today actually in Bright Green, which is a green um, new online um, newspaper, you know, um, they have targeted, looked at nine other seats which aren't our national targets, Isle of Wight West and Isle of Wight East are both located on those. Outside of Brighton and Bristol, the Isle of Wight has the highest green vote. Of course, at this election, the island's being split into two. We've got two green Isle of Wight councillors in Isle of Wight West. So we believe we can make real ground here and actually um, send a national message and shockwaves that greens on the Isle of Wight are growing and that we could elect a green MP here. Even if you and Vic Slaudian, who's standing in Isle of Wight East, yeah. even if you both got into Parliament, you're looking at a, a, a tiny uh, green presence there. So how are you going to really have a voice and, and uh, represent the Isle of Wight? So Labour are going to have a landslide. The Conservatives are toast. This election, by electing a Green, what you will do is you will hold Labour to account. Keir Starmer, as Labour leader, will push the party in the direction he wants to go in. As your MP for the island, I would stand up for you. We have no party whip, so we can vote what is in the best interest of our residents. So we need people to hold Labour to account, which a Labour MP will not do. The Conservatives will be on the sidelines of theirs. But as Greens, we have a strong voice. Caroline Lucas is a well-known politician. She was one Green MP um, since 2010. So we can make a real local change. And of course, she stepped down. She has. So she's seen how the system you know, is a real struggle. She's been fighting the Conservatives for 14 years. She has been on the back benches, but she's made real change. She's spoken up for green issues. Her constituents in Brighton love her, and we've now got another great candidate standing there. As MP, what would your top three priorities be? Young people, ferries, and, oh, it's hard, and our NHS, because our young people are our future. We're not keeping enough young people here. They're going off the island and not coming back. We need to keep them here because we've got a great place to be, but massive change is needed. We need to invest in jobs here on the island for them, raising things like the minimum wage, and they need to be part of our island rather than leaving. Um, on the ferries, of course, nationalisation. It's pushing us in a position now where tourists don't want to come here because the ferries are too high. They can get a flight to Spain, which is cheaper for them. So we need to massively invest in nationalising the ferries so we have more tourism. And then obviously on our NHS, it, it's part of our country's history. It's been destroyed, it's been wrecked. We need to invest in that. Everyone in this country uses it. Of course, those, those wealthiest don't use that sector, but actually it should be free at the point of use for everybody. And it's really important and close to my heart. Okay, so let me ask then, if the other MP that's elected in Isle of Wight East is not green and you're in that position where you've got uh, two party colours yeah. how are you going to work with them and also with the Isle of Wight Council which obviously is alliance at the yeah moment. the Isle of Wight Council is currently run by the independents and greens uh, we're working closely there we work across party already in County Hall with um, support from the Lib Dems and Labour there so we already work together whoever is elected as the MP for Isle of Wight East I would work with because our island comes first Party politics is second to that. Of course, I'm standing on the platform for the Greens. But again, and like I mentioned earlier, we don't have a party whip, so we can put Islanders first. And if there's an issue that we disagree on, that's absolutely fine. We need to get to a place now, though, where actually we do have two MPs that are working for the best interests of the island, which I don't feel we have done for the last seven years. And last question, why should Islanders trust you to be their MP? So I had a really great conversation actually with an East Cows resident. So I'm a town councillor in East Cows, I'm deputy mayor in East Cows. Um, he told me, I own a business here, I voted Conservative all of my life. 
I can't vote for them this time. You as a local councillor have stood up for us on so many local issues, um, but also you know, in the media when it's come to the floating bridge, when it's come to Norris Castle, I've got a track record, even though it's just locally in East Cows, um, that people can trust me, I get stuff done. Also, I'm not the Isle of Wight councillor for the Osborne Ward and East Cows. People come to me with their issues because I know I get things done and the island is my heart and I absolutely love it. It'd be an honour to represent Isle of Wight West.